الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أوجب على عباده إصلاح الأمة في كل زمان ومكان أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أعطى الأجر لمن أحسن وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أسوة حسنة لكل إنسان اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه مجاهد الحق ومحارب البطلان أما بعد فيا أيها الناس اتقوا الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل فقد فاز المتقون Blessed Friday جماعة Let us continue to strengthen our iman and taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala By obeying all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments And abstaining from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited upon us May we be placed among those who are successful insha'Allah in this world and in the hereafter Bless Jumaa. What if now I were to share with you a practice that can bring ourselves closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, a practice that can make us servants of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, that will be loved by Him. Surely, as a mu'min, we are always seeking and we are always hoping for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's love and His mercy. As such, let us reflect now. Upon a story of a man who lived during the time of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, however, he was not categorized among the companions, among the Sahabis, because he did not get a chance to meet with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nonetheless, it was recorded that Rasulullah sallam asked some of his companions, his Sahabis, to look for that man and to ask for his du'a. Who was this special man? He was none other than Uwais Al-Qarni. Uwais Al-Qarni, my dear brothers, was from Yemen. He lived in poverty. Although he was poor, he was a man who was of beautiful akhlaq and good manners. He was known as a son who was devoted to his aged mother and was a devoted Muslim. From the first day he embraced Islam, Uwais had, bad, had badly wanted to meet the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At that time, the Prophet wasallam was in Madinah Al-Munawwarah. However, Uwais had to pacify his desire to meet with the beloved messenger of Rasulullah because his mother was extremely old and needed him by her side at all times. One day, Uwais Al-Qarni approached his mother and gently sought her permission to travel to Madinah Al-Munawwarah to meet up with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his mother gave her permission and said to him, "Go ahead, my son. Meet with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Medina. And when you have reached Medina, and when you have met with Rasulullah sallam, quickly come back home to Yemen." And so Uwais Al Qarni travelled all the way from Yemen to Medina to Munawwara. However, when he arrived in Medina, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not there as Rasulullah was traveling. Imagine how Uwais must have felt. He had traveled hundreds of miles to meet with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but could only send the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his salam. And so Uwais al Kharni left Medina because he wanted to keep his promise to his mother, who wanted him to come back home immediately upon arriving in Medina to Munawwara. Because of his selfless sacrifice and his utmost sincerity in taking care of his mother, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala granted Uwais Al Qarni a special place in Allah's sight and fulfilled each and every single du'a of Uwais Al Qarni. This matter was recorded in a hadith narrated by Imam Muslim. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Inna Rasulullah Sallam Qarqal Inna Rajulan Yati Kum Min Al Yaman." يقال له أويس لا يدع باليمن غير أم له فمن لقيه منكم فليستغفر لكم. Which mean, verily Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, a man called Uwais will come to you from Yemen. Whoever amongst you is able to meet him, then ask for him to make du'a 
to pray for your forgiveness. Dear brothers, blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are several lessons that we can gain from the story of Uwais al-Qarni. Among them, the first lesson is that one of the most effective ways to gain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love is to be of service to our parents. Sometimes, my dear brothers, we would travel for hundreds or even thousands of miles just to search for knowledge and to seek the dua of pious people. However, we tend to forget the noble status of, of, of our parents and that their prayers for us will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be kind to them as long as we have the opportunity to do so and do not neglect them for the keys to barakah and paradise lies with them. Know that our parents have a special place in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As reported by Ibn Hibban in his book, a hadith by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which means the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah lies in the pleasure of the parent. And the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lies in the anger of the parent. Remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands upon us in Surah Al-Isra verse 23 about the obligation of every children to be good to one's parent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-isra wa qada rabbuka alla ta'budu illa iyah wa bil walidayni ihsana imma yabluwanna indaka al-kibara ahaduhuma aw kilahuma fala taqul lahuma uffin wa la tanharhuma wa qul lahuma qawlan karima which means and your Lord has decreed that you do not worship except of Him. And to be good to your parents, whether one of them or both of them has reached an old age while they are with you, say not to them so much as so saying the word of oof. And do not repel them, but speak to them a noble word. The second lesson that we can get, my dear brothers, from this story of Uwais Al-Qarni is that dedication and sincerity is a must in serving both our parents. The sacrifices of our parents cannot be measured in terms of money or wealth. The sacrifices of our mother, for an instance, when she was pregnant with us, and the pain that she has to endure during labor and delivery is something that is hard for us to ever imagine. Our father's sacrifice lies in working hard to ensure that the family has enough to eat and that his children can afford to be educated and even complete their varsity education. These two people, my dear brothers, are part of us. They will never be able to watch us suffer or to bear any pain and would be willing to do anything to ensure that our welfare and our happiness are taken care of. However, my dear brothers, now that they are, now that they are not as strong as they were previously, those legs that were, that were able to bring us to many places are now weaker. So when it comes to a point that they need our assistance and they need our support, would we then be calculative towards them and start fighting amongst our siblings about who would care for them? This responsibility of taking care of our parents is indeed a shared responsibility among all siblings, both sons and also daughters. And if some of our siblings are the ones taking care of our parents, it does not mean that we can neglect our responsibilities. It is obligatory upon us to share the responsibility and take care of them, and to do so with fairness. We must be ready, my dear brothers, to sacrifice for them without thinking about being tired or even bored. We must be ready to provide emotional, financial, and even physical support to those who are full-time caregivers of, of our elderly parents. The third lesson that we can get from the story of Uwais Al-Qarni is the importance or the need for mental and emotional strength as well as patience. For those who take care of their parents and live with them, they will definitely require physical and emotional strength, that is patience and mutual understanding between husband and wife. We need to constantly remind ourselves of the great reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us for taking care of our parents. Be kind to our parents as we care and manage their daily affairs. Try our very best 
to make sure that they feel comfortable in our home just as we were comfortable in theirs. Do not make them feel as though they are strangers and unwelcome in our home. My dear brothers, blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are some of the important values that we need to uphold. No matter what condition we are in, our parents should never be neglected. It is normal that we face challenges in taking care of them, but during those trying moments, reflect upon their sacrifices to us and how they had sacrificed their time, their energy to take care of us and to raise us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the sincerity and strength to continue to serve our parents, whether, whether they are still alive or they have passed on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive their sins and grant His mercy upon all of us. Inshallah. Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات وذكر الحكيم وتقبل مني ومنكم تلاوته إنه هو سميع العليم أقول كول هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين ويا نجاة التائبين اللهم صل وسلم وزوى الدين وأنا أيها التفضل وبارك بجلالك وكمالك على غير بادك وأصرف أبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ورضي الله تبارك وتعالى أن كل الصحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا بربوبيته وإرغاما لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه مصابيه الغرر أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله تعالى فيما أمر وانتهوا عما نهاكم عنه وزجر سيدنا جمعة يغضي رحمة الله Kurbah sebentar tadi telah mengingatkan kepada kita Akan kisah teladan Yang boleh kita raih di sebalik kisah Uis Al-Qarni Seseorang yang hidup di zaman Nabi SAW Akan tetapi beliau tidak mendapat gelaran seorang sahabat Kerana tidak sempat bertemu dengan Sayyidina Rasul SAW Uis Al-Qarni Para jemaah rahimahkumullah Telah berjaya mendapat cinta dan kasih Allah Subhanahu wa taala sehingga doa-doanya dimakbulkan oleh Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Rasulullah SAW alaihi wasallam bersabda dalam hadis yang diriwayatkan oleh Imam Muslim yang bermaksud sekiranya kamu bertemu dengan seorang lelaki yang bernama Uwais Al-Qarni maka pohonlah doa darinya. Para jemaah rahimakumullah. Mengapakah Uwais Al-Qarni mendapat darjat yang tinggi di sisi Allah Tidak lain tidak bukan antaranya Adalah kerana sifat pengorbanan beliau Pengorbanan yang tiada beberah bagi yang telah beliau curahkan Berkhidmat kepada kedua orang tuanya Kadangkala kita sibuk bermusafir ribuan batu Demi menggampai dan demi mencari orang-orang soleh Untuk mendapat doa dari mereka Sehingga kita terlupa bahawa kedua orang tua kita yang berada di rumah Doa-doa mereka itu dikabulkan oleh Allah Subhanahu SWT maka berusahalah saudaraku sekalian untuk kita mencontohi kehidupan Uwais Al-Qarni dan semoga Allah Subhanahu wa taala mengurniakan kepada kita taufik serta inayahnya untuk berkhidmat kepada kedua orang tua kita. Amin ya rabbal alamin. Ala sallu wa sallimu ala nabiyyil Mustafa khairil anam faqad amarana Allah bi dhalika haitsu qala fi kitabihi al-aziz inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala an-nabi ya ayyuha الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت وسلمت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ورد اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي 
وعن بقية الصحابة والخرابة والتابعين وتابع التابعين وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم وفيهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات وقاضي الحاجات يا رب العالمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم ارفع نومة محمد القحط والبلاء والحرب والاعتداء اللهم ولي أمورنا خيارنا ولا تولي أمورنا شرارنا وارفع مقتك وغضبك عنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا وحول حالنا إلى أحسن الأحوال وفرج ما نزل لا بنا من الأهوال برحمةك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم واسألوه من فضله يعتكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا الصلاة